So the next talk is by Andre on hacking the Linux kernel to get more FPS. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? It's working. Hello. Is it uh, green? Yes. Yes. Okay. Hello. Hi everyone. Um, I'm a kernel developer from Brazil, and I work for the open source consultancy Galia. Does anyone here plays on Linux? Okay. Wow. Cool. And I hope it's been been great. And uh, in this talk, it's not very, very technical. It's just uh, collected some work that has been done by a ton of people to make Game on Linux better on the kernel side. So uh, as you probably know, Linux kernel has not really a roadmap. We're not like trying to implement, uh, oh, we need uh, 10 new file systems by the next year or any kind of this. It's all uh, driven by user case. And uh, I mean, if, if you, you don't have any real use case, it will be very hard to get uh, your code in the kernel. So it's all about new use cases. So for instance, some years ago, uh, we had Android that pushed a lot of new things in the kernel, like DRM and then a container that helped it grow uh, the C groups things. And then the cloud that messed up a little bit in the file system stack. So um, in the past, before Proton and this kind of stuff, um, play game, uh, games on Linux was not that easy. Uh, we had a lot of uh, native things, but it was really on and off. And uh, GLBC has some API, is, uh, it's not that stable on the long term. Um, and to, to play online, Wine wasn't so stable either in back then. Uh, so we had some native ports along the way. Uh, notably, the source engine was one of these uh, native ports. And one very interesting example of how the native version is hard to, to get right. Uh, Bioshock Infinite does it, runs very, very bad on native, but if you, add, if you run the Windows version for Proton, is, it goes very great. So it was on and off. Uh, we hadn't like a very uh, big financial uh, interest on Game on Linux until uh, things changed. So Proton was announced some years ago. Uh, it's a big project from Valve to be able to run Windows games on Linux as good as possible. So Valve has been paying a lot of community developers and consultancies like Yale to enhance the Linux gaming in all the stack from Wine, Mesa, and the kernel. Uh, and yeah, after that, things started really speeding up. And, uh, and, and now we have the Steam Deck, and we can see uh, on what was all this effort about now. Now we have the big picture, uh, why they are pushing so hard for the Linux gaming. And this is from the website uh, Boiling Steam. And this is from two years ago. It's not really up to date, but you can see uh, this is like the numbers of, the red one is the reported games on the Proton database. Uh, and the uh, blue one is like games that are running very nice. So you can see that by time, uh, we can, we are really increasing uh, the number of games that we can run on Linux. And this is the Linux market share of the Steam users. And you can see that it's really, really small. But uh, you, can see, you can see that it's uh, getting bigger in a, in a, well, it's getting bigger all of the time. <laughs> <laughs> if this line go by infinity, you get all the market on one day. Um, OK, so now about the kernel features that had, had appeared just because people decided to play uh, game on Linux. The first one uh, is a very dramatic one. I don't know why people hate that so much, but uh, you can now have a case incentive uh, folder on your file system Linux, and people were very mad about that. Um, but yeah, it's optional, so it doesn't matter if you don't, don't want to use that. And uh, to, to achieve that, we had, uh, it was needed to create a Unicode subsystem on the kernel. So now in the kernel, we have all fun emojis and etc. 
Uh, and this is one, one, one of the things that, uh, that I want to, that I uh, liked about Linux kernel development is that this was developed for the Linux, uh, for gaming use case. Uh, but then uh, I think the Google people was like, hey, this is very cool. And then they make it support for F2FS for Android. And, and yeah, so every part of the community can benefit from the effort from each other. Um, so yeah, now we have case insensitive for Linux due to games. And this is, of course, because uh, NTFS is a case insensitive file system. And it's very troublesome to do that, to do the file uh, look, file path lookup uh, from the user space. If you need to emulate on user space, the case insensitive thing, uh, it's very hard to, to do that because you need to try all sorts of combinations uh, but on the kernel side, it's very easy to do. You kind of abstract all the things for the user space. Futex, Futex uh, is what I'm most uh, known for, is the work that I, I was involved with. Uh, so Futex is something that is exposed from the, the kernel. So user space can create mutex, semaphores, barriers, all kind of cool sync uh, sync primitives. Uh, and on the Windows side, you have something similar. Uh, you have the sync API from the Windows kernel. Um, and then you have this function from the Windows called wait for multiple objects. That for, for some reason, games really like to call that. Uh, they really rely on that. And on Linux was uh, not that easy to emulate that, to, to wine emulate that. Uh, we tried with uh, EventFD, but EventFD uh, doesn't scale so well if you have so many waiters. So we moved to Futex, and then after some some years, I finally managed to get it right, and it was merged. So nowadays you can wait on multiple Futexes on Linux. Uh, and this is it was created for gaming, but uh, I know that some. Uh, distributed systems and databases also wants you to have this operation. Uh, but yeah, I, I still need to expose that uh, using ptrans. And uh, the Futex effort uh, kind of created the Futex2 project that I because I was there on the main list, hey, hey, I need a new Futex operation. And people are like, okay, but you need to solve all the other Futex stuff going on. <laughs> And, uh, and well, I, I spent some time collecting what, what, uh, why were people so disappointed with Futex, and then, and now we know what we need to improve for Futex, and I work on the Futex two thing to have a lot of cool Futex operations. Uh, Cisco user dispatch is a feature from the Linux kernel that also was created for gaming because. Usually, when you are developing a Windows game, you you only want to call Cisco. You just use the wrapper. But some games, for uh, because of the DRM thing, they use it to call the Cisco directly using you know, um, the x86 uh, instruction. But of course, on Linux, that Cisco number it didn't match it, the Windows one, and uh, it was very hard for Wine to deal with that. So basically, nowadays you can uh, select a memory region and say that every time you have a, a syscall uh, there, it will not go directly to, to the syscall path. It will call another program to another another backend to deal uh, to see if you really should be uh, issuing that that syscall number. <coughs> So yeah, it, it calls the syscall, but get back to user space. I think uh, like that. Uh, GPU driver. So on DRM, we are working hard to make AMD GPU uh, better. Uh, so in the past months, we have been uh, after the Cinec release, uh, the AMD GPU was uh, exposed to all sorts of gamers and user cases, and this has been popping a lot of uh, bug reports. And we are trying to to fix them. And also, as I said, this is like kind of pushing the the limits of the driver and the hardware. Uh, we are working on new DRM features like uh, a sync page flip in the Atomic API, and are also working to have a better GPU reset rendering. 
because nowadays if your AMD GPU resets, it's kind of, uh, you need to you know, press the button because it won't work again. Uh, also, we are trying to, to get HDR on Linux and also support 3D LUT on DRM. Um, also, in this uh, um, kind of error rendering area, we are trying to have a nice um, feedback for the user when the kernel crashes. Kind of a Windows blue screen with a link to you know to figure out what is going on. Uh, also, we have enabled P Store and KDub on Syndac, so you can have the last DMAS in a safe place to to check out what. Uh, went wrong, and uh, if everything goes right, you can submit that for, uh, I don't know, for the scene server, so they can have a look and, and help you to, to figure out what's going on. Um, hardware enabled, a lot of uh, drivers for the scene deck, and some work on the joysticks and to, to better, to have a, a pattern on how joysticks expose features to user space. Oops, and, and the, well, th that is a lot of uh, a lot of things, uh, sm smaller things, smaller projects like the split lock detector handling. So basically, on x86, you have this feature for for uh, that is the split lock that you can uh, do atomic operations on non-aligned memory, but it's, it seems that you shouldn't do that, and then. Uh, uh, if you if you do that nowadays, the kernel will like penalize you and make your code run very slow. And of course, games were doing that, so uh, we kind of needed to. Uh, we kind of added a button on the kernel so you can turn off, so you can play play your games. Uh, HDI had a, a bottleneck. I mean, it was it was okay, but given that a lot of people start using VR and VR has a lot of HDI devices. Uh, it kind of, uh, uh, we kind of discovered that it has had a bottleneck and then we fixed that. And also uh, a lot, some semantics on Unix sockets, uh, on timestamps, on, time, on the time counter, because Windows and Linux, they play very different on the time, time keeping thing. Um, and yeah, and a lot of documentation that we're trying to, to improve along the uh, Linux kernel. Uh, out of three, uh, this is very interesting because uh, a lot of people do uh, on the free time, they try to hack the Linux kernel to uh, play faster the games. And some people developed uh, task schedulers because on Linux, as you, as you may know, we have the CFS, but people uh, have cool ideas of how to task schedule could be better for uh, desktop use case to reduce the latency, etc. And these people, uh, some of the projects are not very committed to make this upstream. So yeah, they can use the creativity and try a lot of um, different ideas. Um, and uh, another interesting thing is that there are some projects out there like Zen Kernel, Shen Mod Kernel, Liquorix Kernel, that are basically a bunch of uh, an official kernel releases made by the community to have a better uh, Linux gaming kernel. And it's very, it's very fun because they grab a lot of uh, out of patches, they, they grab uh, working on progress uh, patches and make it together and do a release. It's a very experimental kernel, of course, uh, it has some bugs, it has some problems, but uh, I think it's cool to try out to, to see if your games run better on those kernels. And, and yeah, we're trying to, well, I also check those kernels to see what they are come with, to see if uh, there are cool ideas going on there. And for the future, I think uh, we are going to try to enhance the power management to, so the handheld devices can have better, uh, better battery, better life. And uh, there are so many layers of GPU abstraction nowadays with all the translations, and I think we are trying, we will sometime, uh, eventually the bottleneck will be on VRM, and we will need to support uh, that huge stack better. And here at the end, I have some lists of the patches that I set, so you can have a look. 
And I think that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Time for questions. Please raise your hand. No question? I have a question. Uh, like for the task uh, scheduler, did you look into the upstream development that is going on right now where you can specify schedulers through eBPF, for example? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, have a bird. I have heard about that. But uh, I don't know if the people try to like replicate those schedulers using eBPF. But yeah, we'll have a look on that. It might be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Cool. Thanks a lot. Oh, that's what? Sorry, sorry, sorry. One question. Thank you. Um, I had a question about uh, how hard is it to uh, introduce new stuff into the kernel that only you need? Like, you told us, like, uh, some things were just used by you for gaming, so it's pretty new. You, you, you just have the use case. How, how hard is it? Is it easy? Um, depends on. If, if you... Uh, really, if, if you mess with a bunch of code, if you decrease the, the performance of something like on the server side, people will not be so happy about that. But if you uh, don't mess with things that already exist, people will be okay with that. Thank you.